lines are quite clear. Each of you, if you wish to be considered as will, must remain in this house all night. Without sleep. I can promise none of you that you will receive a penny, but if you fail to meet his requirement, your name will be automatically stricken from the will, and any money or property you would have received will be automatically insured for you. That's insane! He was insane! That's not true! He may have been a little eccentric, but Eccentric? Do you call his requirements an eccentricity? Would a normal man have his body put in a metal box and laid to rest in his own library? He was a simple man at heart. He didn't have a heart. This was his favorite room. He used to say that these books were his best friends. They talked to him when no one else would. What's that? Oh, I know it is, isn't it? The like father, like daughter. You should clarify that statement, Ellen, dear. Oh, I'm sorry, Melissa. I meant Catherine, of course. <laughs> of course. Catherine, dear, why don't we go have a seat? Just beginning. Oh, goody. I'd like chocolate ice cream with my cake, please. Anything for you, dear. Wonderful. You can have some milk you like. Yeah. Thanks. I think. Back to business. Mr. Collingsworth's requirements have been made clear to you. You must remain in this house all night. However, you are not restricted to any particular room of the manor. You are free to roam about as you please. Miss Regina Hartman, who, as you all know, is Mr. Collingsworth's personal secretary, will be making periodic checks to ensure you, will you are all present and accounted for. Um, what if she were to miss us by accident? I have considered that. If all of you will see to it that no matter where you are in the house at ten minutes to the hour, you will remain there until ten minutes after the hour, I will have no problem with both. Twenty minutes gives me sufficient time to cover the entire house. Any questions? Is it true that elephants like peanut butter? I'm sure I wouldn't know. I always wondered about that. I just know she was adopted in this family. I know she was. As I was saying, 20 minutes gives me sufficient time. During that time, I suggest you place yourselves in an accessible location. Is that clear to everyone? Yes, quite clear. Excellent. Now, if there are no further questions, why don't men shave their legs? Catherine, please. <laughs> Mrs. Crawford, I believe you have the floor. She can't have the floor. This is my floor. Excuse her, everybody, please. She is just distraught with her father's death. Yeah. Catherine, just a figure of speech. Where? Never mind. <laughs> well, back to the business at hand. Mr. Collinsworth's wishes have been made clear to you. You must remain in this house overnight. And I know they may seem unusual, but they are rather simple to follow. We will meet here again at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Until that time, you are free to roam about as you please. It is currently 8.05 p.m., and Miss Hartman will be making her first round in approximately 45 minutes. Until tomorrow. Yes. Catherine, dear, why don't you go to the den and I'll go put on some music? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, I think I would. Yes. Well, I'm going to run off to the kitchen, and I'll have Miss Falcony cook us up some hot chocolate. You won't be long, will you, Michael? Of course not. Now run along here. Um, come in, I'm coming. What kind of person comes to ring in these doorbells at this time of night? And where is that butler when you need him? Oh, Lordy, I almost forgot about you. Why couldn't you go and be laid out in a funeral parlor like any normal being? Of course, you never was what you'd call normal now, was you? You old fool. Give me the creeps. Sure do like to ring them back. 
That would be crazy. How how could he do that? The money is in the bank. He could have turned it into cash. That would be absolutely insane. Okay, say you're right. How could he do that? He's ever since he started complaining of ill health, he's run the business from here. You have watched him far too closely for that. I've watched him, but not Catherine. She could have helped him do it. Well, what would they do with the, all of that cash? When we were little, my father used to tell us that this old house was filled with secret compartments and passages, that you could search for years and never find one. But if you accidentally got into one, you might never find your way out. Now, I'm sure he told us part of that to frighten us if we ever accidentally tumbled into one, but I think at least part of what he said was true. You see, in the old histories I've read of this house, there have been several accounts of residents using passages to hide from soldiers during the Civil War. And on a few occasions, some of our more illustrious ancestors have used them to hide from the law. See, our family's had a colorful past. Yes, very colorful. And ours will be no less, I assure you. Ours will sparkle with the blue of diamonds, the scarlet of rubies, and the luscious greed of money. Isn't that a marvelous collage of color? Yes, yes. You haven't been listening. Well, of course I've been listening. As I've already said, you and Catherine are the only rightful heirs, and he cares about his precious Catherine far too much to leave her with nothing. I suppose you're right. After all, I am his daughter, even if we were on the best. But terms? That is putting it lightly. You tried to have him and Catherine committed to a mental hospital, and you tried to take his business away from him. I think the only terms you're considering are in terms of his surrender. You know as well as I do that he wasn't fit to run that business. An advertising firm of that magnitude needs fresh blood, fresh ideas. I've been doing all the work for years. He was nothing but a figurehead, but he still is on making all of the decisions. He rejected every proposal I made, and I had to do everything behind his back. Sure, maybe some of the ideas didn't work. Maybe the business lost a few customers, but we were better off without them. Okay. They had no foresight, no imagination. They insisted on nothing but conventional, run-of-the-mill campaigns. Oh, darling, your hands are cold. It is rather chilly in here. Why don't you pour some brandy? Oh, I don't know why I'm getting myself into such an uproar. After the will is read in the morning, the business will be mine, and there will be nothing to stand in my way, nothing in the way of me and my destiny. Come on, Miss Falcony. 
Madam, if you insist on trying, please, I'm afraid I'll have to place both of you under arrest. Under arrest? What is this? Who are you? Detective Smith, from London, here on assignment. Now, you see, it's quite simple. Checking for live signs. Oh, yeah, she is alive. I can hear her breathing. Well, of course she's breathing. She just fainted. Prone to fainting spells, is she? I'm not that well acquainted. I wouldn't know. I'm just marrying her sister. Why don't you go and ask her? Ah, oh, but she is unconscious. I'm talking of her sister, you idiot! See him, my good man! No call for unpleasant reasons. Simply doing my job, you know. Well, despite what Belinda had told you, Melissa is not dead. So how about you go do your job elsewhere? Afraid that that's impossible. I was called here specifically to handle a murder case and handle it by shaft. How do you do, ma'am? Who's murdered? Mr. Hiram Collingsworth. Wait a minute. That is ridiculous. Mr. Collingsworth's death was an accident. Everybody knows that. That is what everyone was led to believe. Oh, she's coming too. Excellent. What I have to say is for all of you. Hey! Here. Went knocked over the books. Apologies, madam. Oh, oh, don't talk like that, please. He didn't mean to, really. <gasps> Such language! Please excuse them. They didn't intend to be so harsh. Quite all right, madam, I think. Michael, what's happened? Where am I? It's okay, Melissa. You just fainted. Everybody is here now. How are you feeling? I feel... Michael, you, you'll never believe what I saw. It, it was him. It, his face, it was horrible. And he was going to kill me, Michael. Whom did you see, madam? Uh... Who are you? Detective Smith! Monday! You're on Now, Matt, whom did you see? My father! What? <coughs> utterly ridiculous! It's the curse. The whole family's gone nuts, so. Now it's taken Miss Melissa. <coughs> Melissa, as I said, you fainted. You were simply dreaming. Michael, I wasn't dreaming. I, I saw him. He was standing right there. And he took my hand and poured me a drink. Well, now I know she. That old man never lifted his stomach with a finger to pour his own drink, much less somebody else's. He's a ghoul! You can say that again. No, no, he is a ghoul, a zombie, the walking dead. <laughs> the legends in my country say that the dead are not the peace for some reason. They will return and walk to the earth until the source of their torment has been found and destroyed! That is nonsense. I should think it's nonsense, <laughs> especially since we can all say that Mr. Collinsworth is here at rest in this very room. You don't want to call that something. That's quite evidence enough. See, if he was not walking about, as you so presume, he would not be right in this lovely metal box. Which I can assure you he is. Um, I'll go get that cold compost for Miss Melissa now. It's not as about me. Michael, I wasn't dreaming. I'm telling you. Obviously, Miss Collinsworth, you were simply dreaming. But it was so real. Dreams often are, Miss Collinsworth. And now, since Mr. Collinsworth is still dead, I still have a job to do. Uh, it is of my unfortunate duty to inform all of you that Mr. Collinsworth's death was likely not an accident, but was quite likely a cold blooded, premeditated murder. <gasps> For him! How did you come to that conclusion? Quite easily, if you let me explain. See, a while back, as you all know, Mr. Collinsworth began making business trips to London. During that time, he and I quickly became acquaintances. You could even say we became friends. At least that's one. How can you say that about your father? Uh, why don't you stay out of this? Please, may I continue? See, a few months ago, he began making friends with me. Phone calls to me, saying that someone was trying to kill him. It first started with a rattlesnake the bathroom. At first, his family brushed it off as being nothing more than an accident. Quite likely as it is a heavily wooded area, though found it odd that it happened all the way up to the third floor. Though it was odd and quite suspicious, that was all it was. Suspicious. No evidence. But it didn't stop there. No. Other accidents continued to occur, such as rat poison in sugar containers, and roller skates left on stairways. We're all aware of the accidents my father had. He was a senile old man. Most of those things he probably caused himself, either through forgetfulness or carelessness. Perhaps. Now, as I said, there was no proof. 
I must admit I was skeptical myself even, though he continued to make those paranoid calls to me, claiming that someone was trying to do him in. He asked me to come to America and help. I was in the middle of filling out the paperwork and contacting locals when I received the unfortunate phone call. Needless to say, I hurried down immediately. See, in our many talks, he had discussed each reason everyone in this room might try to kill him. And since I've had a chance to do some research here, I'm afraid I agree. You mean he was suspicious of all of us, including me? That is correct, Miss Gold. I don't believe it. And neither do I. If he spoke so freely with you about all of this, then tell us, why was he suspicious? What were his reasons? I don't mind telling you all, madam. After all, you do have the right to defend yourselves. Then tell us. Yes, please do. Oh, goody, is it time for a bedtime story? Yes, Catherine, dear. Now, please begin. Very well. See, it was all based upon the same premise, his fortune. That's ridiculous. None of us even know whether we were included in the will or not. It's been sealed for months. Yes, though it is possible that someone did get into that will and find out what was on it. Um, wait. How, how is that possible, though? Because the will has been sealed and in the possession of Mrs. Crawford for months now. Well, may I remind you, seals can be broken. And, well, sealed again. Seal, excuse me. Um, wait. I'm so confused. Do you mean you suspect Miss Crawford? And her accomplice, whoever that may be. See, as I said, everyone in this room had their reasons. Melissa, Catherine, as his daughter, you all did the chat Michael Wolsey, as Catherine's fiance, you two become suspects. That is ridiculous. Ellen Collinsworth, surely you wouldn't suspect your uncle to forget his favorite niece. Miss Hartman, surely you were aware of Mr. Collinsworth's appreciation for your years of service, but you were also likely quite aware of his reputation for, let's say, not overpaying his employees. I can assure you, his reputation well-founded. However, that is not reason enough for me to have killed him. I have the imagination to concoct the scheme to describe it. You can say that again. You have no imagination. I tried for years to get my father to fire you, and he refused. It's honestly a wonder that the business wasn't destroyed with some of the suggestions you gave. And I suppose you could have done better? You bet your little stone face I could have. Anybody? 